Looking at the actual unit, the mixes themselves are contained in the two silver cans. The 3DB couplers are clearly visible in the copper tubes and the components at the center are the 50 MHz filters. Now let's look in more detail at the gain control stage. The input amplifier has a gain of about 28 dBs and is followed by a pin diode variable attenuator which has a range of 45 dBs. The relationship between the pin diode current which determines the amplifier gain and the control volts at the input is established by the anti-logarithmic amplifier. This results in a linear variation of amplifier gain in dBs with control voltage. This IC is the anti-logarithmic amplifier. Above this are the input transistors and the pin diode. After the gain controlled amplifier, the signal passes through the IF filter. This gives 60 dBs rejection to all except adjacent channel signals and thus allows two channel transpositions. Early silver streaks used an LC filter, but more recently manufactured units have a surface acoustic wave filter. The filter is followed by the amplitude equalizer. This allows the response between vision and sound carriers to be varied by up to plus or minus two and a half dBs to compensate for fixed errors in the input signal sound division ratio, for example. The required control volts are set on the personality panel and a buffer amplifier ensures standardization of settings between units. The signal passes through a further stage of amplification and it is at this point that a limiting amplifier and filter provide a sample of the vision carrier for the frequency synthesizer. This transposer has an LCI filter. To the right of this is the amplitude equalizer. The four diodes are just visible. Below this, in the separate compartment, is the limiting amplifier. This completes the description of the IF amplifier. We shall now look at the UHF amplifier. The UHF amplifier uses 25 dB gain thick film amplifiers in Engelbrecht configuration for the first stage. This is followed by two transistor stages with 10 dBs of gain each. Note that for cost considerations, these stages are single-ended. The final stage, which is a gain of 9 dBs, also uses transistors in Engelbrecht configuration for optimum linearity, etc. The first stage is on the right. The output coupler is on the left and provides a sample for the AGC circuits which are also contained in this module but are described in a separate subsection. The variable capacitors around the transistor stages are adjusted for optimum response over the whole UHF band. Three terminal regulators are used which sense the collector current of the RF transistors and stabilize their bias conditions by varying their base currents. This is better seen with a simple diagram. A frequency synthesizer is used to generate input and output local oscillator frequencies because this allows channel and offset frequency changes without the need to change crystals. The silver streak synthesizers can generate frequencies from 512 to 896 megahertz at 8 megahertz intervals. The synthesizer is the most complicated part of the transposer and has been the part requiring most maintenance to date. It uses a mixture of ECL, CMOS, TTL and LSI integrated circuits. Before we look at the way in which the oscillator works, we must decide on a suitable IF frequency for the vision carrier. The UHF vision carrier frequency is defined as 303.25 plus 8 times the channel number. If we decide to have the local oscillator 
on the high side of the signal and the frequency of the local oscillator will be this frequency plus the frequency of the vision carrier at IF. For Silver Streak, this has been chosen as 40.75 megahertz because it makes the local oscillator 344 plus 8N, where N is the channel number, and this is divisible by 8 to give the division ratio of the programmable dividers in the synthesizer. This shows the UHF voltage controlled oscillator whose frequency is determined by comparing a divided down sample of the output with a reference oscillator. The reference oscillator is a 5 MHz crystal in an oven. The reference oscillator should be as high in frequency as possible subject to the limitation of the maximum operating frequency of the dividers. This unit uses an ECL prescaler to allow the use of programmable dividers with a maximum operating frequency of 15 MHz, which in 1981 represented the limit at reasonable cost. This then determines that the phase comparator works at 125 kHz. This is exactly how the output oscillator works, although in practice there are two VCOs, one for the high and one for the low channels. The VCO in use is determined, as is the programmable divider ratio, by the setting of links on the personality panel. Looking at the actual unit, we can see one of the voltage controlled oscillators on the right. The reference oscillator in its oven is clearly visible and above it the large IC contains the main loop programmable dividers and the phase comparators. Unfortunately, things aren't quite as simple in practice because we have to allow for input and output offsets. In the silver streak, the input offset is tracked out. If we go back to the output oscillator block diagram, the main phase lock loop for the input oscillator is identical to that of the output oscillator. The transposer output offset is applied by shifting the input oscillator frequency. Instead of using the 5 MHz crystal oscillator as the main loop reference, a 6 MHz voltage control oscillator is used. For simplicity, assume there is no output offset. The sample of the Vision IF from the IF amplifier is fed to a 651 Hz comparator where it is compared with the 5 MHz reference oscillator after suitable extra division. This controls the 6 MHz voltage controlled crystal oscillator to lock the Vision IF to 40.75 MHz irrespective of input offset or frequency errors of the incoming signal. To apply an output offset, all that is necessary is to shift the Vision IF frequency from 40.75 MHz by the amount of the offset by using another programmable divider which divides by 7824, 7819 or 7829 as appropriate. Looking again at the actual synthesizer, we can see the 6 MHz voltage controlled crystal oscillator and above it are the dividers and phase comparator ICs. We have seen how the transposer gain is controlled with the pin diode attenuator in the IF amplifier. This subsection explains in a little more detail how the AGC system works and how the output power is set. It concludes with a demonstration of setting the power and gain controls. Whilst the gain control device is part of the IF amplifier, the remainder of the AGC circuits are mounted in the same module as the UHF amplifier.